right here. Act like you're crying. Really quick. I am crying. Go like this. No, I'm not, but she's usually crying. No, I know, but go like this. For the video. <laughs> like this, put one hand up. Sup fam, it's Richie from Social Child Support here. And today, we're gonna be talking about family vloggers. What a joy. Now, what exactly is a family vlogger? In my personal definition, I would categorize them as one and or two individuals with no discernible skills or talent, at least none that can be seen, come together, decide to procreate, to multiply, create little versions of themselves in order to monetarily exploit. This video is totally not going to be biased one bit. Before I had this idea of taking a closer look at these family vloggers, I didn't know much of anything about the genre. I didn't know how popular it was. I didn't know the exploits within uh, the entire drama ecosystem that surrounds it. And I think this might be one of the only genres on YouTube that actually earns its badge of drama honor. All the videos are justified. There are children involved. And whenever there's children, much like animals on the internet, people get very defensive. So I've taken precious hours, precious days of my life to research some of the most popular family vloggers out there. And these are my findings. Let's get into it, shall we? So the first channel I'd like to talk about on this list is called Eight Passengers. Now defunct, deleted, supposedly scrubbed off the internet. A pattern of behavior, a running theme, for all of these channels, as we'll soon find out. Now the person in question, Ruby Frank, the mother of the family, the ringleader, the person who films and creates all the content. And on the surface, she seems like a religious person, fairly strict, but I'd say at first glance, if you didn't look hard enough, you just think she's kind of a hard ass, parenting is hard, she's doing her best, until you look a little closer. I'm only gonna say it one more time and then you're gonna lose the privilege to eat dinner. Starting very, very strong withholding food from your children. V very good, Ruby. One more thing in my house. <laughs> I'm going to take the scissors, look at me, and I'm gonna cut its head off. God, I will be so mad. So what are you gonna do? Maybe it's not such a great idea to threaten the destruction of the things that your children care about as a disciplinary action. I, I don't I don't think that's very good. A text message uh, from Eve's teacher and she said that Eve did not pack a lunch today and can I bring a lunch over to the school? This happens quite often when you're having raising children um, because I know that her teacher is uncomfortable with her being hungry and not having a lunch. And it would ease her discomfort if I came to the school with lunch. If you don't pack your own lunch, you're gonna starve to death and it's your own fault, right? She's just preparing them for the real world. Eve is responsible for making her lunches in the morning and she actually told me she did pack a lunch. So the natural outcome is she's just going to need to be hungry and hopefully Hopefully nobody gives her food and nobody steps in and gives her a lunch. <sighs> okay, I'm good. I'm good. That's pretty bad. That's that's pretty indefensible. <laughs> Once you hit 99 pounds, you don't need any suckers anymore. You're too old. You're too big. It's like she's actively trying to give her daughter an eating disorder. I've been a masterful manipulator. I have manipulated using sex. I've manipulated using external rewards. I have wanted something and I'm going to get it. You don't say. But if you're not responsible for your lunch and your lunch money, that's the natural consequence. And I'm really sorry you're learning this the hard way. I will have a wonderful, yummy snack. Just hang in there today and, and just make it make up your mind. You're going to be really careful and make sure you grab your stuff when you go to school next time. And maybe you have a, a good friend who will share some of their sandwich with you or something. I think we can all agree that starving your child as a form of disciplinary action is is not is not good. It's 
<laughs> you could almost say that it's child abuse. It should be reported. And actually, I don't want to spend too much time on Ruby Frank because there's a lot of families I have to get to. Apparently, one of her children escaped and went to the neighbors begging for food and water. They had scratches and bruises and clearly physical violence had taken place. And Ruby Frank is currently in jail right now because of all of this, waiting for sentencing. A sad but necessary ending to this YouTube channel. Next, we have the infamous channel called Daddy of Five. I was actually around making lots of drama content when all of this was going down in real time. It was probably about five years ago, and I think this might be one of the most egregious cases against family vlogging. What's up, Team DO5? So, uh, I'm That's in my lot. new house. <laughs> this is mine. I mean, this may look a little familiar, but it's mine. It's yours, not your children, not anyone else's. Just yours. I gotta put all this... Who's door? I don't know, but I gotta put all this on the computer. Okay, hold on. You know, family right, vlogging is so just right so now, hard. Just it's so hard to make what? YouTube videos. It's, it's so hard to film my children and, and put it on the internet. Bad? So no, hard. I don't know where he got him from. He's been playing with him. What do you mean wrestlers? I don't know. Alex doesn't have any damn wrestlers. So this scenario of the kid coming through the door and they have the camera ready, they're already filming, it feels a bit set up. But let's see where it goes. You got the camera. Okay, they got me. You would have stolen anything. They fucking stole you. Yeah, I could definitely see this guy on a Netflix murder documentary or something adjacent. What do you have? Close. What do you have? I don't have anything. Hold this camera now. The fuck with that. Get up. I don't have anything. You get over there. What do you have? Nothing. Alex! This is bringing up suppressed childhood memories. Dad. They have security. Okay, well, we're, the, we're friends. Well, probably not after this, but I mean... Yeah, thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Alex. Thanks a lot. I mean, seriously, with the face? And the tears. Like there's no way a kid this young should be in content like this, which in all fairness, it's not. This is a deleted, re-uploaded video. But also in all of these family vlogs, the core thought that I keep having is that they just can't consent to this. They're not making any money from this, but they're the ones that have to bear the brunt of all the abuse, whether the videos are real or not. I remember when I was eight and it was a very vulnerable time. Growing up is a vulnerable time. It's very hard, it's very challenging and confusing. And having your guardian, the person that's supposed to be looking over you and feeding you and making sure you don't die is just shoving a camera in your face and telling you to do outrageous things that you will definitely regret later. It's, uh, it's pretty bad. Also, the language, it's so distasteful, it's so trashy. I'm sure many of you can remember your parents yelling at you and the sheer terror of the world ending because it's just so aggressive and visceral, but this takes it to a different level, uh, mainly because it's child exploitation. I sound like a broken record. Okay, I've had enough of them. That's Daddy of Five. Uh, their, their channel got removed and they are now in jail and they lost custody of their children. The next family vlogging channel also no longer exists. It is helmed by a lady called Micah Stauffer. Quite a legendary case. This one might be the worst one, maybe, considering it, but here's the rundown. So Micah and her husband one day decided to adopt a child from China, and they got guardianship of a small Chinese child with severe mental disabilities. And at first, Everything seemed fine. Micah was making content about the adoption process, going to China, thinking about names. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you 13 baby names that are unique and that I absolutely love. And I'm really excited I'm to share sure with you. I'm sure we're gonna love I them too. I don't know if you guys are gonna like them or think, girl, you're crazy. By the way, I can only play this video on a Chinese site because that's the only place it exists. The very first baby name that I have for you guys is Kyoto. I heard this name for the very first time a couple weeks ago and I fell Kyoto. in love. It is a Japanese name. It has, I think the name is actually a city in Japan. She thinks that it's a city in Japan. She thinks. 
This video is called, Our Son Was Diagnosed with Autism Level 3, which is pretty severe. Um, so when they got the child initially, they were under the impression that he had some kind of terminal disease, and perhaps he wouldn't live very long. But then they got the news that their child was definitively diagnosed with autism, which is a disability that while on a spectrum, uh, a person with autism can live a perfectly healthy, long life. The last two weeks have probably been some of the hardest weeks Absolutely. we've ever gone through in our entire lives. This feels like an apology video. It's like the way it's framed. It's, it's, she doesn't have any makeup on to be more vulnerable. I know it's calculated. I know these people. So when we get all of this news, he doesn't have a brain tumor, which is fantastic, but he does have several issues, ADHD, um, level three autism, level three autism, may live with you for the rest of your life, may never, go be potty trained like when we heard all of these things it just hurt it's just gonna be too hard this might be the bottom i remember like praying to god saying like i trusted you so much and like you gave me a little bit more than i than i knew what to do with and i just wish he could be able to overcome this and we love our son so much like we want the best for him and sometimes it does happen rehoming of adopted children. It, it's super sad, super unfortunate that they have to continue going through more trauma and just be passed around within the foster system. But it does happen. However, initially they picked this specific child to be adopted because they were under the impression that it had a brain tumor, a terminal brain tumor. Last time I checked, a brain tumor seems almost like a death sentence. The narrative and their actions say they most likely adopted this child because they knew it wasn't going to live very long and they could make content off of it and make a bunch of money without actually having to raise a full-blown child. It's almost a genius idea if you're a psychopath. So not long after they found out the kid had autism, they put him up for re-adoption to be rehomed and made this amazing apology video. So this is by far the hardest video James and I have ever yeah. publicly had to make. I did just want to say thank you to how amazing our viewers have been. We have some viewers who have been just like so incredibly kind and respectful of our son's privacy. It's just so sinister. Like they, these people are the scum of the earth. Actually, actually scum. Trying desperately to raise a sympathetic demeanor from their audience, but ultimately they were run off the internet like all these other people. The last couple months have been like the hardest thing I could have ever imagined going to, choosing to do. Because ultimately, after- He looks like a thumb. <laughs> pouring our guts and our heart into this little boy. The reason why we can't go into detail of what actually transpired is because we're truly going to protect Huxley's privacy and not let people know. They always go back to Huxley's privacy when they are literally a family vlogging channel. But th that's my Christopher. Uh, she's the worst. The next channel I wanna talk about is Jordan Cheyenne, particularly one specific clip that I found, uh, which I feel encapsulates the entire essence of family vlogging. The context of this is that they just found out that their dog is terminally ill and is going to die. That was not fake. But Jordan forgot to edit out the last two minutes of the video. And uh, yeah. It doesn't matter how much you're educated on that when you're in the moment, it's still so hard to not feel sad. I'm gonna let you it guys go. Sad. I need to go be there for Christian. I just wanted to give you an update because so many of you turned on the countdown reminders for my new video today and you wanted to see our big news. Make sure to hit like and subscribe. Little Timmy's dog has cancer. He's dying. He, he needs he needs the likes. She's an amazing, beautiful little girl and I can't wait for her to bring her home and be part of our family. So if you could pray for us, we appreciate it. I love you guys. Bye. Come here. Come closer for the video. Come closer. Come closer. Come closer. You can't make this stuff up. Put your head right here. Put your head down here. Act like you're crying. Really quick. I am crying. <laughs> go like this. No, I'm not that bad. She's usually crying. No, I know. But go like this. For the video. <laughs> go like this. Put one hand up. Go like It's just... <laughs> Every YouTuber knows the plight of getting the perfect thumbnail. No, go like this. Put your hand like this. But let them see your mouth. Let them see your mouth. Wow. 
Look at me. 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 No, no, look. God. Look at the camera. Look at the camera. God, I wish I had a better son. <laughs> like, actually a sociopath. That's crazy. <laughs> Pretty bad. Anyway, here's another channel called the uh, Doherty Dozen. I think I'm pronouncing that right. It's uh, about a family of 14. Four 14. Her primary content is the mother going grocery shopping for 14 people and uh, flexing on the pores. We are done for today. Here's the end result. I love this Wegmans. They totally spoil me. They check me out so That's fast. one, two, three, four full carts. I understand it's 14 kids, but this feels excessive. Like I'm trying to, I'm trying to do the math here. The four completely full carts. This is for one week. I mean, that's that's. I guess it's a third of a cart per kid. I mean, I guess. I mean, I guess that kind of adds up. That's wild. Tana Licardo Tuvola. Wow, I did not say that right. This is actually compared to all the other ones we looked at. This is by far the smallest one. They don't have a massive viewership. Um, but this one video that I stumbled on is um, insane. So in this quality upload, these ladies are talking about breastfeeding, which is totally natural, totally fine, nothing wrong with that, but then it takes a turn. Any kind of, what do you call these? Popsicle makers, ice block makers. What you doing with those popsicle makers? What you gonna do with those? We've already got some in the fridge, but what we have here in front of us? Milk? Yes. Surely you wouldn't do what I think you're going to do, right? Surely. That, would, that wouldn't. Mm. That was nice. Yeah. We're doing two ice blood spray. For some reason, I'm getting culty, extreme religious vibes. I don't know why, but I, I feel it. Oh, so they're giving me. it to the kids. This isn't you know, so bad. This is my breast milk. He looks young, I mean... We're usually having these outside where it's boiling hot. I mean, he's young. It, 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 we've been for so he's long young. And it's gone dark outside. So they're all, they're all eating it. Okay. They're all eating it. They're all eating it. Does it taste nice? Them my, like they've had my milk, but not now. We're going to tomorrow morning film them prank, them drinking. They know what they're what? doing. No, they keep weird. zooming in on the kids so doing so that. Weird. This feels like it's doubling for some weird fetish that somebody has. Weeds, he's bought you some ice blocks. Oh no. Oh, they're melting. Oh. It's so hot, Joey. Oh, thank okay. you. They, did, yeah, they didn't tell so. him. Yeah, we're probably go to go to a park today. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what it normally tastes like? No way. Have you got something to tell them, Omega? What is it? Hey, hey it's Mum's booby milk. <gasps> that was not a strong enough reaction. What is going on? <laughs> what is going on? It's like. That's mom's, that's mom's booby milk. And this fully grown person is just like, oh, oh that's fine. Mm, maybe I'll give it another suck. <laughs> Did you get him? Did you prank them? That's a funny I'm prank. Why it wasn't. That's not what it tastes like. Yeah, I think you. How, How could dare you do this to Why? Us? How dare you? Now it's on my pants. <laughs> Tastes just like I remember. Am I you going to finish them? You... Dude, it tastes just like I remember. Huh. I had them myself. I drank my own milk earlier. Okay. Huh. <sighs> well, that was that was a that was a racket. So anyway, that was a video that exists on the internet. Okay. Well, I uh, survived all the commentary and I didn't set myself on fire. So. I'll take that as a win. Overall, I don't feel like I can add any meaningful commentary to what's already been said a zillion times. This whole genre feels predatory. The truth is, the majority of people that watch these videos are pedophiles. 
and that can be proven through analytics. A majority of these channels demographics, which has been proven, are older men. But all the other channels carry around this similar stench, this aroma of money over the innocence of your children. Every time I sit down and do a talking video, it always gets real depressing. I don't know why I do this to myself, but it's nice to see all of you again. Hopefully I'll be speaking on camera more often, and uh, I hope you have a wonderful holiday season. Stay sad, but not too sad. And uh, huge thanks to my patrons for always having my back. And uh, yeah.